This mini lecture is going to cover incandescent sources. If you look at our spectrophotometer system that we've seen in this uh, configuration in several slides now, uh, you see the very first thing in the system as light starts to go through the system is the source right here. I'm going to use a picture of a light bulb for a source uh, because a light bulb is an incandescent source. Incandescent just means it glows, it's incandescent. And the way these things work is that you put power, uh, voltage, and current into a light bulb bulb, the filament gets very hot and starts to give off light. And the hotter it gets, the brighter the light gets, and the more blue or bluish white the light gets. Um, and this really provides the, the light for all the rest of our system to work. And we'll be talking about other light sources, such as light emitting diodes, in the next uh, module of the course. So let's look at incandescent light sources. And like I said, we're going to look at two sources. Uh, incandescent sources and LEDs. And incandescent sources are more typically known as black body sources. And I'm not going to go into all the details of why they're called black body. This is a, uh, a historical thing that you probably studied in one of your physics classes at some point. And it has to do with the fact that a perfectly black object that absorbs all the radiation that comes into it also emits all the radiation perfectly. It's the best type of uh, thing that can give off light if it also absorbs all the light. And there are some reasons for that, and we can talk about it in class that I don't really want to go into here. But really what you're interested in working with incandescent light sources is the efficiency of the sources. We're going to talk about three types of efficiency today. Uh, the first of these is what we know as wall plug efficiency. And that's the electrical power in versus the amount of light you get out. And for incandescent sources or incandescent light bulbs, that is on the order of a few percent. It's pretty low. This is why there's all this push right now to move to compact fluorescent lights, because they have much higher efficiencies and are much more energy efficient. As energy costs go up, we want to have our lighting uh, use less of the energy. In fact, lighting is a fairly big drain on the entire energy budget of the United States. Another uh, efficiency that we're very interested in here is the spectral efficiency. And the spectral efficiency right here is how much optical power you have available at a particular set of wavelengths. And certainly in your blood detection experiment, you need to excite your sample um, with blue or blue-green or blue-violet light. So anything in the, the yellow-green, the orange, the red, the infrared is going to be wasted light. In fact, green light is going to interfere with the signal you want to detect, and you don't want to have green light in your source. And unfortunately, black body sources put out a very broad range of wavelengths. This can be seen in the figure in the lower right-hand corner. And the black body formulas are in your book. I'm not going to go into those in a lot of detail. Um, you should look those up. But there are a couple things that you should know about these black body radiation curves and hence about light bulbs or other incandescent sources. First of all, the power that comes from a black body source is given by the area under the curve. Um, so the total amount of power is proportional to the area under the curve, and that increases as the temperature of the black body or the temperature of the light bulb filament to the fourth power. So if you double your temperature, you get 16 times as much power out. So, so really, as the temperature goes up, they can be very, very powerful sources. You can get an immense amount of optical power out of incandescent sources, but remember with your wall plug efficiency of a few percent, it takes an awful lot of electrical power to get you there. Um, also, one thing you'll notice is as the temperature shifts in this curve right here, the peak wavelength, where the peak of this curve is, keeps shifting over to the left or to more blue wavelengths. And that shift, essentially, is given by Wien's Law, which is right here. You can look that up in your book. And it says it's essentially inversely proportional to temperature, or 1 over temperature. And this, this B constant, this is just a PowerPoint error. That should be a small b is given by that, and you can calculate all of that stuff yourself. But what does this say for us? What does this say for our experiment? Well, what we're interested in, and let me get another pin and another color pin here. Let's go to a nice green. Is re We really want to excite down in the region probably below 500 nanometers and sort of right in this spectral region right in here. And so if you look at that spectral region, um, unless you go to very, very hot sources or very, very bright light bulbs, you're really not getting that much optical power as a fraction of the total optical power because that part of the area is rather small compared to the area under the curve. 
And so incandescent light sources, while they can be very powerful and in fact can be very efficient for some types of things, are not spectrally efficient. They give a lot of blue light, but compared to the total amount of light they put out, the blue light isn't very much. And that's true if you want any small range of wavelengths on these types of sources because the, the spectral output is so broad. Another type of efficiency that we're interested in is spatial efficiency. And this just means how easy is it to get the light to where you need it. And ideally, you would want a point source and be able to get all of the light from that point onto another point to excite at very high intensity the thing you're looking for. Um, unfortunately, uh, light bulbs and condescent sources are isotropic, which means they basically, if we have a light bulb filament here, it's going to put out light in all directions. We can't really tell the light bulb we only want to go have it put out light in one direction unless we use a lens or a reflector or something. And so the spatial efficiency, as we've covered before in class, is simply the area given by the black circle here that we call A sub D, which is the area that you want to get the light to, divided by the total area that's hit by the light, which is just the surface area of the sphere with radius D. And that's just 4 pi D squared. And so the transfer function, the amount of light that goes from your source or your isotropic source as a black body or incandescent source would be, would be AD divided by A sub L. And what this says is that this efficiency goes down as the square of the distance. So if you double the distance, it's four times less efficient from a spatial sense. And also, you need to have fairly large areas if you want to collect a significant fraction at all. If AD goes down as a very tiny area, you're really not catching very much light. And that's another disadvantage of, of isotropic sources, such as black bodies and incandescents. Of course, as we see over here, a lens can serve to redirect the light to where you need it. So using some kind of collection optic in your system would be a very wise thing to do. Um, there are some caveats or some things that you need to know about this. If you have your lens very, very close to your light bulb, um, you may think, hey, this is, this is a very good thing because I'm going to collect much more of the radiation if my lens is close to the light bulb because D is small and A sub L is smaller in that region. But of course, remember thinking about imaging systems, the magnification of this system is going to be greater than 1. And technically, it'll be a negative magnification, but let's go ahead and put the absolute value of the magnification there and say it's later, greater than 1. And look what's going to happen. You're going to have a larger image of the filament over here that's giving off the light. And that means your light is spread over a larger spatial area. You're not focusing it down onto a point as you would really like to do. Well, if you move your light bulb back, so you've got uh, twice the focal length of the lens, you have a magnification of one, but since you've moved your light bulb back, even though you have a smaller filament size, you're capturing less of the light. And the same thing happens if we were to move the light bulb back even further and have a magnification of less than one. Although the light bulb is imaged, the filament size is very small, the light that is captured by the lens is focused onto a small spot. Unfortunately, a lot of the light from this light bulb is going to miss the lens as this distance increases as a factor of d squared. So there really are some trade-offs here, and there's really no good way to solve this. And these are some calculations you're going to have to do for your spectrophotometer system. And we'll do more of these exercises in class and run some numbers on this.